here as well today. I'm your Sergeant in Arms. If you need anything, please see me. We'll be there to set up for you. We also have two other Sergeant in Arms. Barbara and Elizabeth, can you wave to the crowd? Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much. You're already inspired, you're already excited, you're already woken up for that early Saturday morning meeting. <laughs> and let's see if we get more inspired. Please join me and welcome up our Air Governor Jerome. Jerome, come on up! I know we're going to have a successful contest today, and I wanted to tell you the three elements that go into making a successful vision contest. The first element are the functionaries. These are the people that behind the scenes, even though one day ago they were running around like the Keystone Cops that make the <laughs> on the day of the contest like Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> They're the ones that organize everything so that when the contestants come up here, the only thing they have to think about is telling their story. They are the ground earth upon which people are walking up to the stage. The second element, of course, is all of you, the guests. You're the wind beneath the wings of the people up on stage. So when they look out into the audience, they see familiar faces and they know they're not alone. Of course, another important group in the guests are the dignitaries. The dignitaries are the people who are not the actors on the stage, but they are the stage managers, if you will. And I always think it's interesting. They are the ones that have come, they have been on the mountaintop. And for people like me, when I started, my first mountain was my competent leadership. When I got to the top, and I said, oh, that's great. I'm at the top of the mountain. <laughs> I set up my tent, and I said, I want to look at the sunrise on the top of the mountain. And the next morning, the fog lifted, and they said, this isn't the top of the mountain. This is base camp. The mountain <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but at each level, no matter where you are, they're there to tell you. They're not going to tell you that the way is easy. But they will tell you that the view from the top is breathtaking. And the final element, of course, we wouldn't have a contest if we didn't have the contestants. And more importantly, it's the fire that they bring, their passion, which brings them up here. And it's the compassion to compete. They're not, com on the surface, it may look like they're competing against other people. But they're really competing against themselves. When I go to the gym, I get no health benefit by being stronger than the retiree or whatever next to me. I get stronger by being stronger than I was by constant exercise. And so, with these three elements, the earth, wind, and fire, when you're up here as a contestant, you can feel like, as the words of Alfred Lord Tennyson in his poem, Ulysses, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, to strive, to seek, to find, not to yield. Now I yield the floor to the Division Governor, Contest Chair, Cassandra Lee. Yeah. But you know what happens. 
is in this picture. <laughs> no. Bring it to bed. The six contestants that you will witness in table topics, along with the six contestants that you will witness in international, will bring what I call their A game. They know that they are competing against the most proficient speakers in the South Division that came from all six areas in this division. They know today they have to be bring their A game if they want to walk away with one of those trophies sitting over there on the table. Now they don't want just any trophy, right? There's a third place, there's a second place. Yeah, you know which one they want, right? First place. First place. So audience, I ask this. As our contest masters walk us through both contests, be alert, be engaged, and witness today our contestants bringing you their best. They are showing today that they can take in what? Experiences by being in our contest today. And we're going to start with our very first contest of table topics. Let's see who can bring their A game with a one to two minute extemporaneous presentation that will be run by our contest master, Ms. Tiffany Salinko Power.
Presses is our Table Topics question. We are ready to hear from Table Topics contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time that is necessary to complete their ballots. Table Topics contestant number one, Carolina Mosley. Linda Larson, author of The 12 Secrets of High Self-Esteem, says, Proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Linda Larson, author of 12 Secrets of High Self-Esteem, says, Proactive people do not blame other people circumstances or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Carolina Mosley. Madam Contest Master and my fellow Toastmasters, I definitely agree with Linda. In order to be the best that you can be, hopefully you learn the lesson the first time. Now there has been some lessons that I had to learn by repeating them over because I did not get it the first time. So if we learn by our mistakes and we put what we've learned into practice, then we will be okay. Now if you don't learn it the first time and you have to do it over and over and over again, then you're gonna stay in the same spot you're in. You're gonna be planted. But if you plant that seed and learn it the first time, and you put a little sun on it and some water, it has nothing to do but grow. Learn your lesson the first time. Linda is right, I'm a positive person and I believe in sharing that positive attitude. So I wanna share with you today and I want to tell you this one motivational thought that I had. The thought was, there's only three people that I have to please. One is God. The second is myself. And the third is nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> Table Topics contestant number two, Dawn Pope. Linda Larson, author of The 12 Secrets of High Self-Esteem, says proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Linda Larson, author of 12 Secrets of High Self-Esteem, says Proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Dawn Pope. Awesome. 
myself up, dust myself off, and I start all over again. I totally agree with her. Nothing is impossible. I have found. Yes, I was born with many disadvantages in my life. I grew up in the projects, and people said terrible things about me, but I didn't believe it. I didn't use it as an excuse to be a product of my environment. I was determined to be more than my environment. Statistics said I would drop out of high school, but I didn't. I went on and I graduated from college. They said women from the projects were promiscuous. You could do anything you wanted to with them. No, baby, that was not true. I was married for 38 years to one man. They said they don't have class. They don't know how to carry themselves. I can carry myself anywhere in the world. I am a people person. If you meet me in a grocery store, if you meet me on an L train, wherever you meet me, I love you. I love people. I let nothing hold me back. I am not afraid to love, to give, to care. Nothing is impossible for me. When I was a child, I stuttered. Can you believe that? I had a hard time getting one word out. But now I'm here to say I am happy to be a Toastmaster. Toastmaster had made me a better person because nothing is impossible when you believe in yourself. Nothing is impossible when you have family that love you, family that care for you. My brother also grew up in the projects and he is one of the greatest firefighters in the world. And I dedicate this moment and time to him. Thank you for being the best you are because I'm the best I can be. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Table Topics Contested Number 3, Sherry Allen Reeves. Linda Larson, author of 12 Secrets to High Self-Esteem, says proactive people do not blame <coughs> other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Linda Larson, author of the 12 Secrets of High Self-Esteem, says proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Sherry Allen Reeves. Responsibility 
for everything that I do. And it was recently that I've learned what it means to have really have acceptance. Acceptance about who you are, acceptance about what you're doing, acceptance about the people that you surround yourself with. I have to be accountable for who I am today. No one else can take my place. No one else can do for me what I need to do for myself. One of the things that I recently thought about as I was even preparing for this contest is that what would the question be? What would the question be? And I often thought about, I just woke up. I just woke up to realizing that I can overcome obstacles. I can overcome all the barriers that I thought in my life, that I was to this or to that. And today, today I stand before you as someone who woke up to realize her dreams, to realize the possibilities for her life, to realize that I can accomplish something that no one else can do because it's my goal, it's my dream. And yes, I take responsibility for every step of the way. You see, people often tell you in life what you can't do. People often tell you who you are. They define you before you even walk in the room. They make a judgment. They make a stereotype. They, t they think they know you. But I know who I am. I'm a person today who has overcome. I'm a person today who works to build leaders as I want to be built myself. I'm a person today who has overcome obstacles after obstacles. And with that, I thank you. Contestant number four, Kate Webster. <clears throat> Linda Larson, author of The Twelve Secrets of High Self-Esteem, says, Proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces <coughs> for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Linda Larson, author of The Twelve Secrets to High Self-Esteem, says, Proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Kate Webster. self-esteem and for three main reasons because of the three A's that I follow in my life acceptance awareness acceptance and action by having those three key elements in my life I'm able to keep the focus on me on my side of the street so that I don't get caught up on the other side of the street which sometimes I want to go and control and mess with but if I stay on my side of the street mm -hmm. I can control that because all I can control really is myself Awareness, 
is being aware of what's going on inside of my heart, my spirit. Once I'm aware of that, I can move into an acceptance. Because when you are aware of yourself, there's good and there's not so good sometimes. The more we can accept those parts of ourselves, we can bring them together, mind and body. Then we're ready to move into action. And when we're on action, we stay on our side of the street. We don't cross over and get onto other people's sides of the street. Because by staying on our side, it's clean. It's clear. I'm in control. That doesn't mean I'm forcing anything to happen. I'm connecting my mind and my body and my spirit. And by following awareness, acceptance, and action, I keep my side of the street as clean as I can. Thank you. while the judges mark their ballots. Topics contested number five, Tammy Brewington. Linda Larson, author of The Twelve Secrets of, to High Self-Esteem, says, Proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell me why or why not. Linda Larson, author of The Twelve Secrets to High Self-Esteem, says, Proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position to t of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Tammy Brewington. to the same, I will get back up, okay?
one minute of silence while our judges mark their ballots. Table Topics Contestant number six, Barry Nixon. Linda Larson, author of The 12 Secrets to High Self-Esteem, says, proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Linda Larson, author of The 12 Secrets to High Self-Esteem, says, Proactive people do not blame other people, circumstances, or outside forces for their situations in life. They keep returning to a position of total responsibility. Do you agree with her? Tell us why or why not. Barry Nixon. distinguished guests. I absolutely believe that I am responsible for wherever I am in my life. Why? Because 22 years ago I was homeless. And I'm not talking about the kind of homeless where you live in a bad apartment with the rent don't come out. I'm talking about I lived in garbage cans. I ate out of garbage cans. I slept on vents. And here I am today. And I'm here today because I never really believed I was homeless. Actually, I used to make believe I was part of a National Geographic kind of expose of how does it how do poor people live? <laughs> because I knew that I was there for a reason. See, I was very angry as a young man. <coughs> my mom was an alcoholic, and I kept blaming that. Even though I had great successes in my life as a Marine, I used to fly jets for a living, and yet I was with other guys, many people who were homeless. And he would ask me all the time, why are you still happy? Because I'm like, I'm not going to be here for a long time. <laughs> this is just temporary. I'm just passing through. <laughs> In fact, the Marine Corps trained me on how to use the proper newspaper to go to the bathroom. You can use Sun Times versus the Tribune. <laughs> they trained me how what kind of garbage to eat. And at the same time, I knew that I was here for a reason. So the only way I'm going to get out of it is to change. As a man thinker says, as soon as you change your thinking, your mind will change. And when you're homeless, you had that book, As a Man Thinker, worked for me because when you're homeless, you don't have anything else but your mind. And you certainly have plenty of time to think. So as soon as you begin to think where you are, and the only thing I have to remember is this is where I used to be. This is where I am right now, and this is where I wanted to go. So I really figured out the only thing I had to do was just walk here. And when I'm homeless, since I didn't have any bags to carry, it was easy for me. <laughs> so I absolutely agree that where you are in your life, you are completely responsible. And I'm testimony to that. Now,
Madam Contest Toastmaster, we have all the ballots.